This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today to start turning your dreams into a reality. and gents ah oh, thank you so much for listening to scratch your own itch uh, i really cannot appreciate you more because honestly i know you can be listening to so many other podcasts or, or an audiobook or music but you came in because you saw either some awesome clickbait title that i did with this podcast or you maybe are tuning in because you know rob personally my guest or maybe you just are tuning in because you go, scratch my own itch. That sounds interesting. So I just want to know, I just want you to, to know, though, that uh, if you're going through something like tragic and there's a pain that's like just just inside your heart right now, like take one second for me and just put your hand on your heart and just breathe into it and just exhale and just Relax yourself, calm yourself. Know that this moment and why you're tuning in right now happened for a reason. And and really look at it, your life as, as you're the authority of it and look at what you've been through and what uh, you've already overcome because that is making you the person you are today. So all this confusion of what to do next with your life, if you're having that, um, you can just let it go. But I could I could ran on forever. I want to get in this interview with with this awesome dude. His name is Rob Statham, and he's building a brand around being a beer and wine sommelier. And if you know anything about being a sommelier, it's not an easy thing to achieve. It takes years and years of practice. It takes a a, a level of test that usually just kills people and w- whomps them out because it's just so hard to go through. And I have the fortune to talk with a beer slash wine sommelier today and kind of debunk what their day is like. Like, what do they do in a day? And also debunk um, what they do outside of the restaurant industry. And that's why I'm really excited to bring to you this interview. So give a huge warm welcome to the one and only Rob Statham. Hey, thank you for having me, Logan. This is pretty exciting stuff. Dude, totally. Uh, so I'm super happy we connected. Uh, first question I'd like to launch into is, is uh, what's, a, what's one thing that you wish people knew about being a wine or a beer sommelier that I think most people do not know about? Well, I think the first thing is a lot of people think the word sommelier that you're automatically in a restaurant. And, and a lot of us that are actually very highly trained in wine and beer are not. In fact, uh, many work in the brokerage environment, a lot work in the event side of things. Um, you have a lot that actually educate and work in the education field. I myself like to work a little bit in the event space and a lot on the education side, particularly with vlogging and video, which I, I know you're pretty familiar with, with uh, just some of the things I've worked with and launched on uh, platforms like LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. So I, I'm curious, uh, what is one thing you want people to know about your area of expertise, like within a, a sort of like a story, like, you know, give us a story around that too. Well, I think, 
a lot of people want things simplified in today's uh, age. You know, we're busy people. We're all chipped in. Uh, whether you're chipped on on your phone or you're chipped in at your computer, we are really, uh, and to quote, it's kind of funny using the word, a LinkedIn society. And with it, I think the main thing is, and I know with you, with your expertise in, in acting and theater and in doing these podcasts, I think the key word is simplicity. You know, we can go on and we can get in depth to the nitty gritties and the details. That really sits for industry professionals and people within the industry itself. When you, when you reach out to the broad public, the key of really making anything work is to educate, but make it in a format that's simple and fun and uh, that's memorable. Oh, man, I love that. So um, because I think it is really hard to stand out as like a brand, you know, and, I, and, and part of this podcast is about, you know, struggles and business come together. And I really want to know, how are you really building your brand now as a wine and beer sommelier? And, and most, most people go like, heck, they work as a bartender. Like, why would they want to build their brand? What, what's the point of that? What's the importance of building your brand and what does that mean to you? Well, you're very right. Or they're often uh, the role of sommelier, which really means wine steward. Uh, it's a function in a restaurant, whether they manage the entire cellar and liquor operation or they're on a floor and they, they act as a um, uh, really a step over a waiter or a bartender in the sense that they become really skilled and knowledgeable in wine, spirits and beer. And their, their function is to sell it and move it. Um, one thing that I did and one thing I saw a big hole in was nobody was really expressing insights into the industry on social media. I mean, you have, uh, you know, and there's some awesome, awesome influencers I'm connected with. you got the Kirk Mercandantes and the Bobby Umars and, you know, uh, and the Jay Andrews and such, which are really chipped in on the self-help and self-improvement side, which is a competitive field. And uh, these guys are brilliant at differentiating it. So I kind of looked at what they were doing and uh, some insights from them and really observe people like this and said, you know what, there's nobody doing this on a social media platform or really representing uh, breweries and wineries in a constructive way in video. And what really got me into that was doing TV spots. When I was working with a company called Groovy Grapes about four years ago, I got introduced to Daytime Ottawa TV. And uh, fortunately for me, I had a background in entertainment. It came from being an assistant cruise director in the cruise line industry where I helped manage all entertainment. So I was comfortable being on set and stage, but I hadn't used it in about eight years. So you can imagine the nerves that were going on through my skin to be on TV. And this was four years ago. And it flew, it worked. And from there, it sort of evolved. And I realized there's not a lot of people expressing this regularly uh, for the public to watch. And everyone has watched, there's a lot of people watched the movie Psalms or uh, studied wine or looked at what it's like to become a master sommelier or even harder than that in a lot of ways as a master of wine, which is the highest level in the wine world. So they looked at this field and you kind of look at it like academia and college or university. You're like, oh my God, I got to go through heaps of books and knowledge and insights to even understand this and to attend classes and lectures. But there's nobody out there that was really broadcasting it. So I found that there was an opportunity to brand and create this brand called The Drunken Grape, uh, which is uh, a business I own. I own the trademark to the name as well as the um, domain names and the .ca and the .com. And I was lucky to really, and I say lucky, really to be able to stumble across this name, which my stepmother suggested at Thanksgiving dinner some three and a half years ago. And I was even more fortunate when I started seriously using LinkedIn about a year ago, when LinkedIn video, and I think you remember LinkedIn video is pretty new. It's only about a year old. So I started using that as a platform to talk just a bit about beer and wine picks and some of the microbreweries and some of the wines and a bit of the regions and the history that was available in such a vast field. Dude, I'm, I'm sitting here with a huge smile on my face because you're doing exactly what I did. I, I, I don't know if you are familiar with James Altucher, but he talks about... I know the take, name. He, know he's, the- he's brilliant because he talks about taking taking a field that you're interested in. You know, maybe it's, uh, in your case, like beer and wine. <laughs> and, then, and then connecting it and combining it with another field. So it could be self-improvement. And it sounds like, I mean, while well, I look through your content... It, 
I usually learn something about wine, but I also feel like a better person after I learn about it <laughs> because after, you know, digesting your content, it's like self-improvement meets, uh, meets, uh, meets sommelier classes. And that's what I really <laughs> love about it the most. And so oh, thank it's you. really cool. It's really cool what you're doing. I just want to say that. So, um, yeah, and it leads me to my next question, which is, um, because you're building a brand on online and social media, what have you found on online to be the best times to post on LinkedIn? Uh, in, in even though you're in uh, Canada right now, well, I find either you hit early morning or early afternoon, and the reason for that is if you hit early morning, and you know I'm not the biggest morning person, so sometimes it's pretty tough for me to do that, but. Brian Schulman, for instance, loves to get up at like 5.30, 6 in the morning. And I know uh, I've met Brian. He's been up here for uh, the first, very first in uh, inaugural. Uh, it wasn't a LinkedIn local, LinkedIn Unplugged. Jay Andrews and his wife, Louise H. Reed, which have done a great job on themselves on, on LinkedIn and in social media, building a network and building a brand, launched this. So Brian came up and we talked about that because that was a key question. And he likes to launch it in the morning, whereas uh, some people like to launch their things mid-morning. Uh, it could be around 10 a.m. He likes to start early. So, I mean, he may even put it up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. So the early birds watch it. Because when you think about it, the decision makers and some of the key people in the business world love to come in early before the staff. And they're in their office an hour and a half or two and that's when they're reading or that's when they're carousing social media or carousing marketing sites or thinking about how to extend and build their brand further and they come across and stumble across and watch these videos and they have time to view them. The other thing is mid-morning when people are sort of active and uh, they're you know taking five minutes at 10 a.m. with a smoke or coffee break or whatever it may be and they turn on their phone when they're outside with a cup of coffee in their hand, and they, they go, hey, let's check out what's going on on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. The other one's early afternoon. I always found that somewhere around uh, 1 to 3 p.m. tends to be a good hot time to do it. Uh, Any time after that seems to be hard, in, uh, particularly in the LinkedIn platform. Now, I know on Instagram it varies a little bit. You could probably post things a bit later than that into early evening when there's high activity. So it depends on what platform you're working with and what your goals are. I know for mine, um, in the field I'm in, and for my age category, because I'm Generation X, I'm just a bit ahead of you guys, but it's just, uh, it tends to, LinkedIn tends to work really well because you got more serious-minded business professionals and people who really want to make a difference. And you can really learn about them and see who they are. And, I, and there's a magic to that as well. But uh, early morning, mid-morning, early afternoon seem to be three strong points, depending on what you're trying to move and message you're trying to convey as far as posting things on social media. Dude, that's, that's a huge insight. I think a lot of people that are listening to this now have found me through LinkedIn. And so I think that gives a real great insight of, hey, you guys, try these times to post if you're not having great visibility Numbers don't mean everything. I want to no. tell everyone that right now. Like, it's really discussion within the comments that is my uh, personal measurement of a quality post. But yeah, I mean, you can have 500 likes and 200 comments, but the comments could kind of be meaningless. You could have 30 likes and a whole com. All of a sudden, there's like 50 comments that are insightful, and people are really getting engaged, and you can start to see the community communicating with each other. And that's, uh, you know, that's when you, when you really realize you're having more of an impact because these people come to dev become devoted. And, um, like, again, I've listened to Kurt talk and Bobby and, uh, Brian and Jay and, uh, you know, Mark Steele reaching out to some of these, uh, Mark Metry with his, uh, awesome podcast, humans 2.0. When they talk about these things, they talk about, it's always much better to have a small dedicated following than it is to have a massive following that doesn't really pay attention to you. Yep. Yep. Uh, shout out to uh, Mark Metry, but shout out to Kevin Kelly, who wrote a great post about this. A uh, thousand true fans. Is it a great post? And and um, it, it really, really tackles down why all you need is a thousand true fans to live off of uh, some sort of thing that you're doing, either with art, it, it, in your case, with uh, beer and wine. But I want to I want to go into uh, and switch gears a little bit. Sure. A lot of people, they do listen to this podcast because they know 
me for my vulnerability. They know that I just uh, I don't like to really clown around and and tell people how great life is. I, I'm willing to be um, open about how things are going in, sure. in my life and stuff. You're is there? Thank you, man. Is there um, maybe a, a a struggle that you went through, uh, either with depression or maybe suicidal thoughts? or maybe uh, eating disorder, anything that's really hard to share that makes someone just feel less alone by sharing. So, Well, I never went through any of those, fortunately. I was always a pretty stable guy, and I'm blessed for that. I mean, uh, I have friends who fight depression, who fought depression. Um, for me, the big battle was growing up, and uh, I was a small, kind of nerdy, unathletic kid before I turned into this athlete, and it was really weird. Um, I have a twin sister, and at the time, she was the athlete as when we were children, and she has a rare condition they thought was linked to mus muscular dystrophy. My sister from 13 on, her shoulders frayed, and she couldn't lift her arms over her head anymore. And here I was, this puny kid that was bullied, and I faced bullying into my uh, early teen years. And at that time, it's almost like in this weird thing of being twins, I kind of absorbed what she lost. I got much broader shoulders. I shot up in height. I turned muscular. I got strong. And I, you know, I had to overcome not only bullying, which I overcame pretty quickly because you grew size. And then, you know, I started to do judo competitively and that changed a lot of things too. That was a big game changer because I also became calmer and less resentful. But it was the years of of mental scars that go along with any kind of damage like that that you have to learn to overcome and just step aside and realize that in a lot of cases, it's not our fault. In a lot of cases, it could be circumstantial. Uh, it could be health issues you're born with. It could be uh, a mental condition you're born with, or you were just born into a hostile environment. Fortunately, I wasn't. My parents were good people. Um, but you really don't know. And, and you know, Logan, I really appreciate your realism because you do expose the truth. Like You do talk about the good, the bad, the happy, the ugly, and everything in between. And really, people need to know that that it's just not all a bed of roses out there too, that all of us behind the mask or persona that we've portrayed have had demons and issues we've all had to fight and defeat. Oh man. Yeah. It's so, so true. That's why I do it. Um, that's exactly why. Uh, and it just, the suit, the, the truth sets you free. That's what it comes down to. And I it really, does. man, it uh, does. Uh, and, you know, and I think the other challenge that we always face as business builders or people that are uh, pursuing a career is doubt at times. I mean, um, I still work a couple jobs. I still have money funneling into this. It's still relatively in its infancy. The drunken grape is a bit over three years old. So there's some hits of contracts and some money's been made, but you're always reinvesting. I need a new camera. I need new equipment. I got to improve my website. Uh, I need to attend these things. I need to take more wine or beer courses to get further educated, or I need to learn more about whiskey or liquor now. And in my case, in my industry, and I mean, it's as anybody puts it, it's if you love what you do, it's a pleasant grind. If you hate what you do, then it's hell because it's always a grind anyway. And it's just getting over the day to day little issues that somebody could turn around and say, Hey, man, you're driving in the right direction. You're doing great. But we're also sitting back sometimes going, Well, where's the money? Where's the, uh, where's the success yet? Because part of our society and, you know, what we live in in North America is brainwashed into instant gratification. And the big problem with that is it's a lie. Nothing is instant. And everything worth it is a lot of work. It's a grind to victory. Yeah. Dude, you're so right. It's the, uh, I think it's the, the, the days are long and the years are short. That's um, true. And so it's, it's being wise. able to, yeah, I mean, I really think it's the, the, the hardest thing to swallow is, is realizing that what you do, just do every day, if you're 1% better, it's going to amount to something great. So, Hey man, I want to just do Three more questions. Round us out strong, if that's okay with you. These are sort of like minute yeah. and a half type answers. You've done a great job, incredible job, by the way. I think we got a, a, a real insight of, of who you are and what you're working on. And also building a brand, too, is just, it's such money for people that people don't realize that they need to tap into. So, true. Um, the, the first to last question. Uh, or if you, the last question is, uh, I like to ask people what they think in their opinion is the key to happiness. 
Wow, that one's deep. Um, and you, you really, you really have to know yourself to answer that question. Um, happiness really very, differs for everybody. I, I listened to uh, Kurt Mercadante today. I chimed into one of his uh, freedom videos that he had on uh, on Facebook, and he touched onto that question because he said, you know, for some people it's money, but in the end, it's often not money. Uh, and he talked about himself, about how. He um, went from an income level that was like 17 times higher than what he's earning now, but how much happier he, happier he is because his life's a lot more fulfilled. And whatever endeavor you pursue, one thing always comes out about happy people. And the truly happy people are balanced. And when I say balance, they pursue what they do, but they also know what matters most to them, whether it's their relationships, uh, their family, their lover, um, usually those things come first and paramount. And then uh, it's the five best people they surround themselves with. And then from there, it's really a keen understanding of what you like and don't like. For me personally, to get to where I am now, I went through a sea of things I didn't like. And, you know, at times I didn't listen to intuition, like when my time in the IT and telecom industry, I spent a few years there between all the years in hospitality. And really, I should have just stayed in hospitality and, and just pursued uh, a direction in it. Uh, so it's a really, in the end, happiness is really, you got to really dig deep and know yourself first to answer those questions. Oh, man, you answered that so well. I love it, uh, man. Um, I got a question specifically for a beer and wine sommelier. Sure. What, is, what was your favorite book reading for learning how to use your memory and how to, because I know that wine and beer sommeliers have to be, have excellent memories, right? So what was like a book or, or some sort of like a um, technique that you use to memorize all these different drinks and whatnot? It's funny because I'm right now in the last year, I've been taking uh, various stages of courses of three minute French. So you study French for three minutes every day and it's this oral course. Um, for me, it's sort of tied into that and what drove me into taking that course and it's working out quite well for me and improving my French language skills is, uh, I find I'm most driven in 15 to 20 minute spurts. So if I want to read, do it when you're passionate, read it in 15 to 20 minute spurts, but just don't skim over it. Even if it takes you 15 minutes to read one page or to reread one paragraph to really, you know, something that's really key in a document to understand it. Um, it's been a very, very powerful learning tool for me. Uh, humans, you know, I, I like to multitask. I'm a bit of a hyper individual. I probably suffer from a little bit of AHAD or, a, you know, attention deficit disorder. Um, never been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the fringe of it. And for me, it's the bits and pieces. So it's always wise to schedule out a bit of time. Sometimes I can sit down and focus on things for an hour straight, just reading and, or two hours getting into the nitty gritties. But in the world of wine and beer where the reading often is pretty technical and it's not as exciting as you think, it's a lot more exciting to drink it and uh, you know share the knowledge of it. Um, but when you get into the details of it, I mean, you start talking about geology, subsoil sets, soil types, uh, how climate change is affecting the vineyard. You get into different methods of vinification, uh, what styles of barrels are used to age things. And, and the same thing with beer, uh, you, know, you know, what type of hops do you... Do you boil in the hops? Do you dry hop it? Um, you know, what kind of malting uh, are the malts are you integrating to create a beer style? What's the end result? Um, some of this information is really technical. And I find with anything that's technical, you're best to do it in short spurts, and but short, very concentrated spurts because you really remember it. Dude, yep, yep. You're so right. Studying active. I mean, I'd have to memorize the entire plays. And I... Uh... You can't memorize that all in one day. You got to take oh, small yeah. bites, you know? Yeah. So. It's, it's uh, my judo instructor used to have a great saying. He said, you know, you could, you have to crawl before you can walk. You have to walk before you can run. And the other one he used to say is how do you eat an elephant? You know? And I said, I don't know. How could that be hard to eat? And he used to laugh and he said, no, he eat it one bite at a time. Yep. So true, man. That is money. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, Let's round us out with, I, I lied. I want to do two more questions. Go ahead. First bud. place is, uh, where is, where is a place, just one place you want to send people to if they want to learn more about Rob Statham? Um, you know what? Follow me on LinkedIn. 
because cool. uh, there's a lot of video, a lot of video content. You can also uh, connect with me on Facebook because I will post things there. Um, Facebook is a little more rounded because, you know, I get into my business and sometimes my political or social philosophies as well. If you're just interested in just the pure dynamic of what's going on with the drunken grape and you want to learn more about the beer and wine world, come plug in with me on LinkedIn. It's probably the best platform. Nice. Yeah. And I will, uh, make it super simple, e easy peasy folks for you to just do a click of the finger or a click of the mouse and, uh, you can be directed over to LinkedIn and uh see rob's profile and and chat with him and hey if you found him through this podcast like mention that that's that that would be awesome um and i know for a fact he would be very open to to discuss uh a, a potential virtual coffee or something like that i mean he's super responsive so the guy is just uh he's on there and and, and he won't let you down uh, the last question I'd like to ask, uh, just because I really fear for people taking this podcast and listening to it as just sort of like self-improvement uh, entertainment, or maybe they're like, oh yeah, I got my sort of my podcast in and I, and I feel like I did something, but really did you do anything? And the answer is no. And so I like to give a little bit of homework by, um, by asking you to give that homework to somebody, you know, it could be, a uh, uh something to dealing with maybe a self-inquisitive question, maybe something that you heard one day and you're like, wow, that really makes sense. Or maybe that you do something within your uh, routine or habits that really makes you a better person. So what is that? It's funny that you bring that up because um, recently Bobby Umer challenged me to do the 12 Days of Gratitude Challenge of videos. And uh, you can do them at any point in time. But every day I, I learned this, uh, actually from reading the book, The Secret of All Things, uh, almost a decade ago. And it's to express daily gratitude. I mean, we're just fortunate that we live in awesome countries in Canada and the US. I mean, we could be in a place where, you, you know, we, we worry about, oh man, I may have lost a job, I gotta go get a new one, or hell, that business contract didn't come through. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to borrow some money to pay, uh, you know, your rent or your mortgage for the month, but you still have a roof on your head and you still have food in your stomach and we still have warm clothes to wear and clean clothes. Um, gratitude is just fundamental. Just be grateful for all the blessings you do have because if you're grateful for the blessings you do have, um, many more blessings come rolling along and they come along unexpectedly and pleasantly surprisingly. Man, I don't think we could round this out any better. I know for a fact. Uh, gratitude. I started that, I think, three and a half weeks after my suicide attempt. And I know for a fact it helped me so much with clearing out the muck that was going inside my brain and the muck that's currently going through my brain, losing a job recently, you know. And that's, so it's like. And it, yeah, I mean, that's tough. That's, uh, that's uh, one of the worst things. That's next to being told somebody uh, the trauma of losing a job can be as bad as um, losing a loved one. Um, so, you know, much blessings and love to you, Logan. You're a strong man to come through and admit that and uh, to really overcome that kind of depressive forces and, and to continue fighting that battle. Thank you, my man. Uh, well, hey, Rob, this has, been, this has been amazing, dude. So happy we took time and uh, made this recording finally. I know this won't be our last talk, but I think uh, we've let our listeners really tune in and also, uh, honestly, like, just... Seriously, try the gratitude thing out. It, it'll help you out so much. And it will. and just start small. And, and, and I hate to give people advice. I think it's really important to, to do it in the way that you like to do it. You know, maybe record it on your phone or maybe if you're not a writer, you know, record it on your phone. Maybe just make a habit of doing it five minutes in the morning or five minutes at night or some way like that. And I, I, I know Rob, too. If you reach out to him, he's going to he's gonna respond. So uh please take the time to do that so uh until then rob thanks again for coming on the show logan loved it thank you very much god bless you brother much love all right don't don't go away yet i'm yeah. just trying to stop our recording There'll be girls across the nation that'll eat this up Babe, I know that it's your song, but could you better lead up Get down to the heart of it, though no. It's my heart, you'll sit out of your life Don't make me tell you again Woo! Oh, wow.
wow you made it to the very end of the show thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of scratch your own itch with your host logan tyler nelson to make it to the end gosh that doesn't happen very much nowadays i mean especially with the constant distraction so i appreciate all of the efforts that you just took out of your day to make it to the end and if you hit that subscribe button and leave a review you would have no idea what that would mean to me so thank you so much for taking the time to hit that subscribe button and if you leave a review check it out just screenshot it send it to me and i'd love to host your review out on the show but don't ever forget like i say you matter and you're enough love is the main reason for how all of this happened love for all my fans love for all the shows got love for all my memories no matter where i go even if i'm out to nothing i know there's always something it's not a fitness test but it'll always